Mr. PC, an enigma to some, a moron to some, and yet to others considered a possible presidential candidate in 2012. Many of you will know him as the executive producer of the world-famous marketing agency, PC House Productions. Whatever can be said about Mr. PC, it is true that he's become an icon that won't go away. From his career as a gangster rapper to his run-in with the Justice Department over allegations of illegal bookmaking for the Pig Olympics, Mr. PC continues to weave himself into the fabric of American culture. Join us now as we start from the beginning of this odd yet fascinating tale, Mr. PC Behind the Myth. The story begins in the heart of Sin City, Las Vegas, Nevada. Mr. PC, known as PC to those close to him, grew up in the squalor of the suburbs. Yet he wouldn't be held back. Gangster rap was finding its feet in the music world, and somehow, someway, so did PC. Mr. Swagnificent, you and PC started producing rap music together at a young age. Tell us a little bit about your biggest hit song, A Can of Arugula, on the smash hit album, Innocent Bystander. Uh, could somebody grab me a cappuccino? Well, Bob, the thing that made our music so great was that there was so much truth in it. We grew up very, very hard. I can remember going in the kitchen, and all we had to eat in there was a can of arugula. And if you think about it, the music just sort of wrote itself. You say that you grew up hard, but there's many in the industry claiming that you and Mr. PC were fronting, for lack of a better word. Our music speaks to that. The lyrics were so raw. I mean, our music was a glimpse of what we were living every day. Try to imagine being the only kid on your block that didn't have his own chauffeur. Our parents made us sleep on 250 thread count sheets. Who does that? That's ridiculous. What was a defining moment for you, that moment when you knew that you and PC were going to make it big? Well, Bob, it's hard to articulate the emotion, but I guess the defining moment would have to be when PC was asked to be the host of the BET Music Awards. He was asked six times, and that's when I knew it. All the player haters, all the jealousy, all the doubters, all the non-believers would have to accept us for who we are, gangster rappers. There were many critics. Some were saying that Mr. PC went too far with some of the lyrics. Do you believe that you were a positive influence on society? Well, what do you expect the lyrics of the Stone Cold Gangster Rapper to be? I mean, PC's main goal was to heal the rift between the East and West Coast gangster rap wars. It was like he was promoting gangster rap music with a heart. And that's positive. Describe PC in one word. Thug. In 1995, Mr. PC shocked the world with his announcement of retirement from gangster rap. He described it as an epiphany of epic proportions. He then turned toward his newfound passion, pigs, and traded in his bling for bacon. Together with a longtime friend known only as the Turk, they founded the International Pig Olympics. The organization grew faster than either one of them could have imagined. Woo! I need some whiskey. Listen, let me tell you something. It happened so fast, even the Muslims wanted in on it, and they don't like pigs. Every country around the world wanted to host the next Pig Olympics. China, Bolivia, Madagascar, <laughs> even the frogs. We were getting calls from prime ministers, presidents. It gave us a lot of power quickly, and you know what they say. Well, you know what they say. 
So tell us about where the idea for the Pig Olympics came from. That's a funny but true story. Me and PC was doing this thing at this place, and this broad kept bringing us drinks. This movie comes on. Babe, Babe the Pig? That was a smart pig. Do you know they put peanut butter on his gums to make his mouth move like that? I'm not saying that was his real voice, but I'm not saying it wasn't either. So I digress. Anyways, so he watches the movie top to bottom. Doesn't say a word like he's mesmerized. Movie ends, he gets up and says, let's go. I look at him like he's crazy. I got a drink in my hand, but he's the boss, so I follow him. We get in the limo, and he tells me he's quitting gangster rapping. He says their future's with the pigs. I look at him like he's crazy. Next thing you know, we're at a pig farm. Bada boom, bada bing. You know the rest. You still sit at the head of the International Pig Olympic Committee, is that correct? Yeah, that I do. And Mr. PC? Uh, not so much. Mr. PC had to step down in 2000 due to allegations of illegal bookmaking on an internationally sanctioned Olympic event. Although by the grace of God, no charges were ever brought forth. The feds didn't find nothing. Not for lack of trying, though. But on the advice of Mr. PC's attorney, I can't say no more. How would you describe Mr. PC in one word? Innocent bystander. That's one word, you know. Mr. PC left the spotlight, and some speculated he would go back to his roots as a hardcore gangster rapper. But he seemingly wanted to melt away. In late 2000, he turned up as a short order cook just outside of Roswell, New Mexico. Once again, he managed to gain attention as his culinary creations set fire to the desert. By early 2001, the tourist industry in Roswell shifted from aliens to gastronomy as Mr. PC delighted friend and even foe with masterful recipes. This unexpected success gave rise to the common chef, an idea that speaks to the average person without any culinary training that they too can create extraordinary culinary masterpieces. See thecommonchef.com for more details. He then went on to defeat certified master chef Sam Betty in the biggest cooking competition in the world, culinary combat. So, Chef Betty, how did you first meet Mr. PC? Excuse me, Bob. i got to take this. Vector 291, Vector 291, come in. Eagle is gold, I repeat, the eagle is gold. I'm sorry about that. Uh, you have my undivided attention now. Uh, so, how did I meet PC? Well, I was driving through the desert, middle of nowhere, and there's this dinky little diner. Um, I remember seeing a line of people clean out of the door. There was nowhere to park, buses lining the road, it was a madhouse. I finally get to the door and uh, walk into the establishment, and there's PC behind the diner counter cooking on a skillet. I thought, this is crazy. I've been training my whole entire life. I'm a certified master chef, and here comes this gangster rapper turned master chef almost overnight. You know, it's like he was the Mozart of the culinary world or something. I'm telling you, this guy, he's an alien. So how long does it take to become a certified master chef? For who? A normal person or an alien? Okay, let's move along then. So you were at the top of your game, the hottest sensation in the culinary world. Along comes Mr. PC and beats you in the championship round of the culinary combat, your own competition. There are some that claim that this drove you over the edge. Now you're out to prove that Mr. PC is an extraterrestrial being? How do you respond to that? Well, think about it. I mean, he finds his fame as a short order cook just outside of Roswell, New Mexico. What does that tell you about him? Hang, hang on a second. Okay, all right. Sorry, you can never be too careful. You never know when they're monitoring. <clears throat> anyway, whether or not he's an alien, he's weird. This guy, he's working with Charlie Sheen. If you could describe Mr. PC in one word, what would it be? Unidentified. After successfully defending his coveted culinary combat championship for the fifth consecutive year, Mr. PC hung up his oven mitts. He was quoted as saying, that'll do, pig. At this point, we have no idea how Mr. PC got into ballroom dancing, but in 2007, he sizzled on the floor like a pound of bacon in a nine-inch skillet. He drew from his gangster rap roots to bring a fresh new era of dance moves to the ballroom circuit. And even more shocking was his revolutionary new approach to dance, both parts in a competition that usually consists of a dancer and a partner. Ms. Pettigrew, you've been involved in ballroom dancing for most of your life. You've won championships. In fact, you're the only three-time winner in the history of the WDC. 
You've taught at the most prestigious schools. You've dedicated your life to the genre of dance. Tell us, what was the first thing that went through your mind when Mr. PC entered onto the ballroom scene? First of all, Bob, what an honor it must be for you to have me here today. Second, let me just say, I love dance. Ballroom is my life, darling. There's just something about the beauty, the elegance, and the grace that defies description. Mr. PC belongs nowhere near such a prestigious dance sport. You were one of the judges at the 2010 WDC Championships. Mr. PC was headed for a three-peat, but you stood in his way. Is it safe to say that you were biased going into the championships? Biased? Certainly not. I just didn't want him to win. I'll admit his presence did raise the profile of ballroom dancing to a spectacle. It would have been outrageous for him to have won three years in a row. That honor should be reserved for someone with more distinction, someone with more skill, someone with more, how shall I say it, class. I'm not saying he's untalented. However, he fits into my dancing world, excuse me, our dancing world, like a four count swing in a foxtrot competition. <laughs> if you could only use one word to describe Mr. PC, what would that be? In conclusion to this bizarre tale, Mr. PC has been summed up as a thug, innocent bystander, unidentified <laughs> by some of those who knew him best. I'd like to add my own one phrase to describe Mr. PC. Stone cold digital pimp. No matter how you see him, hero or villain, sinner or saint, there's no denying that Mr. PC has a knack for surprise and reinvention. While he always leaves us with more questions than answers, None of those questions is more intriguing than, what will he do next? Time will only tell as he continues to build the most powerful marketing agency in the world, PC House Productions. You can find out more at PCHouseProductions.com. Thanks for joining us on this edition of Mr. PC Behind the Myth. driving through the woods in the middle of nowhere out in the desert and driving through the woods that doesn't work what the hell <laughs> chicken lips that good enough